What's going on, y'all? Vandal is back again for Dow Records, the pop-up season two, episode nine, coming up 3rd October, and I got with me right here, the one and only CK Flow, a.k.a. Symbolic. What's going on, man? Yo, good to be here. Thanks for coming through, man, and uh, appreciate you taking the time out to do this uh, video interview with me. This is something that I've really come to enjoy as part of doing the pop-up, is having to have these conversations with the artists. And also to introduce artists to all the people out there who are watching and who are participating in the show, in the metaverse, to get to know and discover awesome talents. Uh, so I guess we'll start, we'll kick off the show with um, just giving, with you giving us a bit of an introduction about who you are and what you do and where you come from and so on and so forth. So the floor is yours. Yeah, absolutely. Yo, Vandal, I got to start this off saying uh, thank you. Thank you for all your innovation. Thank you over the years. We've toured, we've worked on music, we've done so much in terms of that goes right back to who I am, which is the, um, you know, I, I'm symbolic, aka CK Flow from Toronto, Canada. And, um, you know, our, as, as a part of a collective, we brought hip hop here like from i'd say the, the second stop damn you saw that bus that's the second stop what i'd say toronto arguably everything that came out of new york as the original home of hip-hop had to stop off in toronto and the thing is you know how 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 i saw it was we we really did not see ourselves toronto as a place was was kind of sleeping and and our crew people in our crew and i helped with that we brought hip-hop like actually saying toronto hip-hop like having events in toronto um not just just only people from the states um and so you know we had uh planet mars back in the days <laughs> 905 lounge was something that we did bring it out to the suburbs um we basically just lived hip-hop and um expression art um and and that really uh showed like brought like allowed me to be who i am hip-hop black culture and and so i mean there there are so many things including touring with you um learning about how really the extent that hip-hop had spanned across the globe um yeah man i what more can i say symbolic like working with cmp music cmp uh productions um crazy mental productions for mm -hmm. for y'all y'all that uh don't know and uh cryptic souls and then symbolic music crew which you yourself are are, are one of the pillars of that so yeah man like living hip-hop and and art and 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 culture that's what i'm about and not only are you an MC, but you're also uh, a VR artist and a filmmaker. So maybe just elaborate a bit uh, on that. Yes, yes, for sure. So like how it came to me was um, hip hop showed me about culture, like, a, a, well, hip hop showed me culture as well as, as, as production. And then I got into production, did like, I went to school later, did did the whole like undergrad and masters, but the whole time it was hip hop was my foundations. Like I brought my learnings from hip hop into those programs. And fortunately I had, you know, teachers and professors and was in programs that they were like, whoa, I thought I had to, you know, play a role of like a, a you know, a, a, a student. They were like, what about that hip hop? And I'm like, word, okay. And that helped me to um, excel. And so, you know, from doing augmented reality and um, storytelling, lo location-based storytelling, um, I, I literally on the Ryerson University campus uh, created a, a happening as we call it where you you would engage with an app that we created where you would um have a story that was told as you move through through the campus it was called are you as in art ryerson you or are you haunted so you can look up um documentation on that anyways um and um and then i found 
360 virtual reality storytelling. And for the last six years, um, I've been focusing on that. My company, Mix It Media, um, we, we tell stories that um, basically the, the goal is to drive people to real world action based on um, digital storytelling. That's amazing, man. And like, I know that, you know, since we've known each other since the early 90s, um, you've always been the storyteller. And I think that, you know, through through lyrics and telling your stories through songs, now you, you've brought in that visual element uh, through the 360 and the AR and VR experience, which I think really um, is a sign of the times because these are things that, you know, back in the day we could only dream of, you know, having these conversations and, and like, remember, okay, so I'm going to go back a little bit. Remember that time with Carl and G and then we, and we had the, the photos that we create this comic book strip and we went to shoot it at Nathan Phillips square and all these different things to create these like animated comic strips that you, we could put on the internet at, at the early days of internet. Like, I think these are the type of things uh, that the creative elements of hip hop and people involved in the, crea the creative uh, world, I guess, in general, mm -hmm. um, specifically from, from what we've done in the hip hop community is being able to, to go beyond the music. And like you with the VR and AR side, you know, our focus with our records is obviously the, the blockchain and the metaverse and, and that side. And they all interconnect. And, and we're going to there's going to be a time soon, bro, where all of this is going to come together and, yeah. uh, you know, all under sort of one one roof, one umbrella where all the creative uh, elements, including everything that we're doing is going to be something that if I can really say, works. like, there's an accessibility that we worked on, uh, on, on like four track, eight track. Like I, back in those days, I was working with exclusively with other people, like on a lot of the sound side, yourself, Phil, um, Nia, I did, you know, there's a certain accessibility that comes with the technology and with the, the art being, you know, infused, um, with the, the, you know, the technology and the, the, the back end side of it. So, you know, I'm, when it comes to the blockchain, I, you know, we've had a few conversations. I've talked with other people. I'm super interested and I, I can understand it more. Um, I would probably say like back in the days, how I understood studio work, you know, I, like when you were, when you were like, um, using dials to, 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 to chop a, a clip and sample, I was like, I get it. I know it can be done, but I'm not like fully, I don't fully have it. And that's where I'm with blockchain to tell you, you know, to, to lay it out like that, where, you know, I understand that there are ways of verifying uh, data and, 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 and validating things, whether it's the value or whether it's the, the, the fact that it exists, but you know, I'm, that's not, that's not my, uh, my wheelhouse, as we say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now that we're, so kind I'm of, glad to be a part of this. That's, yeah, that's, that's, and, yeah, yeah. And I'm glad. I'm glad that that you're a part of this as well because then we can also have the opportunity to showcase to the people in the metaverse uh, what you're what you're doing, how you're fusing the hip hop and the VR and AR and stuff. And I think that that's that's an important connection to make because then we open up more doors and more possibilities to collaborate and create, which is what this is all about and which is what this whole show is all about. And since we've already kind of like shifted the conversation into the blockchain realm, maybe we can kind of dive into the collaboration for, for your track with Alex Shell. And uh, maybe just maybe give us a bit of, um, a bit of an idea of how it went down, uh, what was the process between you know, working with him and coming up with, uh, you know, the artwork for, for Little Lies. Yeah, man, absolutely. I mean, it was actually really interesting because um, I didn't really fully understand how he did his art. At first, I saw images and I'm like, okay, well, maybe, um, you know, um, like, he, I didn't realize he generates his art 
programmatically. And so I was like, oh, so then we went back and forth and I was like, okay, well, what about like, can you, you know, generate art based on a video that like, you know, the video for the actual song. And it, it you know, it, it took some looking at like how, how to be able to do it. And he generated some stuff and sent that back. And it, it basically went from very abstract programmatically to becoming the image. So you wouldn't even know the image and then, or that what, you know, you wouldn't even be able to recognize what it was. And then all of a sudden you'd start to see, oh, this is what it is. And I was like, that is amazing. And so, um, you know, like it did, it did go through a process to even figure out, which is really, I think that's something because, you know, you connecting us and then us being like strangers, I'm in Toronto, he's in Russia and, and being like him, not necessarily, even his English isn't like he he's he was like my english isn't that great like when talking or whatever i'm like okay cool we can work with this and then coming to what is it that we do and then realizing how they can come together it's great yeah that's what these this is the stories i like to hear bro um i like i like to hear you know the, these connections that that we can make in this virtual world and how they um, evolve into collaborations and then the process in which people collaborate because your, your experience and then say last week the, the, the artists that we had on the show and the week before everyone's experience is going to be somewhat different you know Con uh, the mediums are the same art and music but the experience on how the, the creations can come to be is something that's different and that's it's really cool to hear and this is something that that I think for me is an important um, because it takes people out of their comfort zone in a lot of ways and then that's where we can discover and come up creatively with some crazy shit and and you've been doing this because yeah. I mean you like I got a sh shout out spazzo and you know us going out there like that led to stuff in the future and so we had experiences back in the days when I had some long dreads down my back. I remember like sitting in a place and someone just touching my hair and I'm like, how do I deal with this? Well, that's basically what we're doing, do, doing digitally, right? Mm -hmm. Like, how do I deal with this fact? Like, yeah, we want to, we want to be here. We want to do things and we have parameters. So, yo, Bredrin, you're, you're, you're the guy for that. Good mm -hmm. job. I, I appreciate it. Word. And I appreciate you, bro. Um, I think that, uh, you know, we're like, we're setting the stage now with this conversation for people to come through on Saturday uh, into the metaverse, into crypto voxels and, and experience the show and get to experience the music and the visuals and participate and support the artists through the audio NFTs that we are, that, it would, that we're releasing. And um, yeah, like, have you had a chance to check out the space yet in crypto voxels to check out the venue? I, I clicked on it, but I didn't go, I didn't move around like uh, a lot. So this interview is going to be on the screen as, as is the standard, right? Yep. Yep. Right. Right. Um, yeah. So I clicked it, but I didn't, I didn't get to, to move around uh, as much as, you know, to be able to speak much to it. Okay. And it's pretty much going to be around the same time that, that we're doing this now um, on okay. Saturday. So if you're, if you're free, if you, if you're, Free, I hope that, that you'll be able to come in and experience I'll the world. I'll be there, and, man. You know, Hell yeah. Experience. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here right now. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so so um, blockchain, I know that mm -hmm. you mentioned a bit about it before. Um, right. What, what are some of the experiences that, that you've had, um, if you've had any uh, directly with um, anything blockchain related? Man, I can't say other than like, I've, I've heard a lot about it and, um, you know, see, I've heard of, you know, from different countries that are looking at, for example, healthcare being put on blockchain. I've inquired about it, talked with brilliant people, yourself being included in that programmers that I, you know, that I know it's, but I, uh, yeah, I, 
that's that's the extent is like the curiosity or it flowing through my information stream because i'm always looking for information that um you know uh, things that are interesting to me so that's the extent of it i would say now being being a creative and kind of understanding the the potential of blockchain technology uh just spontaneously, what do you think would be ap the applications that would uh, interest you personally when it came to blockchain tech? Well, outside of the the interest that how it pops up uh, right here, mm -hmm. that's already already one where using blockchain one can 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 um, you know verify, validate, and value purchase art and and disseminate it uh you know again verifying it that's that's you know hands down clearly uh of interest but but i would have to say it sounds like and you know i'm someone i've worked in video games in the past i've worked in software i've done little coding but my coding was after my soft like i've worked in software and that my coding added um like an understanding to what i was doing and who i was working with and what they were doing mm -hmm. and so it you know we were using databases even before that just text files that that stored information that you then would draw from in the in the the program um you know software mm -hmm. um so the reason i say all that is it just it just becomes clear that if you can create a security slash a verification system around that it applies to the entire world <laughs> is what i'm saying you know i just mentioned healthcare when that when i heard that i was like that started to open my mind to realize what we're talking about is a way of s storing data and then like globally making it so that people can't you know people can say this is the real thing it sounds an art world i mean going back beyond the art world that like i'm really about or not beyond but like you know that you look at paintings and um get, like because my, my 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 studies again firstly hip-hop then after years of hip-hop i was like go i went to school fortunately the university where i was at they were like and the program i was at they were like that hip hop stuff is amazing in Toronto, Ryerson, New Media, big ups. So the thing, but the program still had a bunch of like, it was art school. So yeah. my point being, they were like, you know, they, they talk about art and art history. And when you talk about art and art, art history, a big part of the wall, some part of it is like, what is art and what makes it like, um, you know, when they're the stuff that, that is historical, so, you know they still want to say well is this really it mm -hmm. well blockchain talks to that that's what comes to my mind it's like the blockchain is a way of saying this is really it what this is that thing because yeah. you disperse the you know people validate it it's amazing because it, it all stemmed from an anonymous satoshi nakamoto coming up with the bitcoin blockchain and the idea of creating a peer-to-peer -to -peer digital currency that's where and this is where we are um, pretty much 10 11 years later and we're here at this point with music on the blockchain art on the blockchain all of these things interconnecting and we we have an interconnection between because eventually finance finance and money uh, plays a role in in almost everything that we do right so the art and the music tied in with the money and the finance and doing this all through blockchain technological innovations, I think is, is going to really reshape the way that um, we interact and participate in our creative endeavors and allows the artists more say and more opportunity to control their financial destiny so to say, without being like under the control of say a record label or the music, the traditional music industry or the traditional art industry where 
you know, your art might not be accepted by the gallery because the, the curator doesn't like you. For, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. So so then we bring in th this element of decentralization, which I think is, it's it's not as clear cut as it sounds because decentralization, I think, is something that is is uh, perceived differently by different people within different spheres uh, of different industries in within mm -hmm. blockchain. But as the the underpinning, um, you know model that that we want to try and achieve this uh, equality or this parity between um, all people on the platforms decentralization is a is is a good vehicle to get us there although there are hurdles but you know if i could say i i think what you know it makes me think back going back to like you know like cryptic souls times where um in Toronto, things were on lock and, um, you know, through the efforts of, you know, well, Phil and a lot of people actually, um, like, our crew was like a response based on being like bastardized, basically. Absolutely, that's true. And a lot of people built up things. And, and what, I, what I think is, like, this is, a, this generation with this technology, it is something that it, it, it's basically, you know, it, it is a response given, you, you know, given where we're at. The thing is, I think that we have to just kind of build something while we remember the, the importance of, of where we come from, you know, culturally, historically, and then still giving young people, not even giving, like their will, their voice will be there. So I, I think, and I, that's, that's a part of the problems of the past. And so, as maybe we can build in a way that will s harmonize and synthesize uh, and then variance different whether where you are this is doing it different places on the planet different quote demographics different like mm -hmm. and you know so i think that's that's one thing like it is it's a new a new thing that can come through and there's an advantage based, based on momentum and and so hopefully we'll be able to hip hop i think has done that mm -hmm. you know it has been able to embrace many many components largely but then i also think that you know the the black voice is still suffering in many ways around the world or being uh you know um silenced and and even turned into just the, like the thug party and it's like yeah well where did where did chuck d go where did like that aspect of it so all that to say you know yeah here we here we are and we have an opportunity and you know hopefully because it's hard it's easy I, i'll say for myself to be clouded by like whether it's just wanting to do to have having a vision or whether it's just the hurt of of how how things have uh, people, you know, and in, in institutions and so forth have, have gone against it and it's just like, I'm going to win. Mm -hmm. You got to win. But at the same time, it would be good to win and then have the, the lasting power by being embracing. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. It is a technology that uh, can, can bring about change. It doesn't always. It, it, like any technology, which is a tool, it can be used in a variety of ways. But I, I believe that, you know, this technology is something that uh, as we move forward in, in the years and more people in the new generation start understanding and working and developing with it, that there are going to be a lot more opportunities for sort of uh, autonomy from the, um, I guess, the the powers that be in many ways, whether they be financial, whether they be the gatekeepers to, to the cultural and creative industries, uh, whatever it is, uh, I think that this, the, the technology allows, will allow and can allow the people to kind of reclaim that sovereignty and then have a, a vehicle to develop and build their own economies around it to be self-sustainable and, and to be able to, to do the things that they want to do without relying on uh, the gatekeepers to open the door and give them access. And that's what like, I find fascinating about it because there, to me, right, that, and you mentioned hip hop again, is like there, there are a lot of parallels 
that I found with blockchain and hip hop. And although, you know, the, the origin of blockchain and so on comes from the idea of creating this uh, new digital currency, peer to peer exchange, but at the same time, it's like underground and it's bubbling and people are doing things that haven't been done. There's pioneering happening. And this kind of coming from a 90s hip hop perspective is sort of what we went through in Toronto, trying a to lot. get the doors a open, lot what we went through. getting music on the radio, doing shows in, in, cl in not even clubs, in bars that didn't want to have hip hop in them, you know, and, and fighting to get a, a mainstream hip hop radio. And now everything uh, hip hop is mainstream. So with block, with this blockchain technology is kind of like revisiting that idea of like, here's this, this uh, entity and it's underground and it's trying to break through because it has great ideas, but it's fighting against the mainstream. It's, it's fighting against the establishment in, in so many ways that it's being pushed down and, mm. and, and, that those are my kind of like my parallels right. in my experience uh, and sort of how I see my journey uh, with mm -hmm. blockchain and stuff and, and trying to open the doors for more people to onboard people to, to mm -hmm. show them the, the potential that this technology has to en en enhance their, their lives, whether it be financially or whether it be through the, the building of communities and so on. Um, that nice. That's, yeah, man. So it's Saturday, man. Saturday is, is going to be the day, October 3rd. It's Saturday, y'all. It's Saturday, and we jamming right here, right now with Bando. Saturday, Pop Saturday. Up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right now, it's Saturday, Whoa. and that's amazing. And if it's after Saturday and you're checking this out, it's right now, and that's also amazing. It could also be before Saturday as well. What? So don't, don't forget to to come Saturday. Yeah, because I'll, I'll post I post the interviews up uh, earlier, normally to do all the promo to get people familiar with the artist so that they can come out and check out the audio NFT and the music when it drops. So it might might be before. It will Saturday. it will be for sure. <laughs> it's probably going to be tomorrow. <laughs> all right, but tomorrow's right now. That's all I'm saying. But it'll Yo, be lots up. of love from Teal Canada. No oh, doubt, no doubt. symbolic in this CK flow with the vandal. We yeah. love you and we love the blockchain because we doing it. We, we innovated on the blockchain. Exactly. Much love. Thank you so much. Symbolic. Um, Y'all, if you're out there, make sure to check the description below. Follow my man on the social medias. Uh, he's going to be up in the space in crypto voxels on Saturday, October 3rd. 12 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you come through. We are we run the show on time and on schedule, and we are also going to have uh, guest DJs as well. But you know we'll, we'll get into that uh, as we uh, proceed with the next interviews and the next uh, sessions coming up. So uh, much love, my brother. Stay well, Yo, and um, until too. Saturday. All right. All right. See you All then. Right. Peace. Peace, everybody.